Preface of the American Housewife. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Judd Niven. The American Housewife by Anonymous. Preface. The writer does not deem any apology necessary for adding another to the long list of gastronomic works, provided she has accomplished the desirable object of producing a cookbook which shall commend itself to all persons of true taste, that is to say, those whose taste has not been vitiated by a mode of cooking contrary to her own. Although not a Ude or a Kitchener, she does profess to have sufficient knowledge of the culinary art, as practiced by good American cooks, to instruct those not versed in this truly interesting science. The inefficiency of most works of this kind are well known to all experienced housekeepers, they being generally a mere compilation of receipts by those who have no practical knowledge of the subject, and are consequently unable to judge of their correctness, or to give the necessary directions for putting the ingredients together in the right manner. A conviction that a good practical cookbook was much needed induced the writer to exert herself to supply the deficiency. She does not pretend to infallibility, but having taken a great deal of pains to have each receipt as correct and nice as possible, she trusts that they will generally give satisfaction. The mode of cooking is such as is generally practiced by good American housekeepers, and the receipts embrace all the various branches of the culinary science, from preparing the most simple vegetables or broths, to making the most delicate cake, creams, sweetmeats, etc. The writer has endeavored to combine both economy and that which will be agreeable to the palate, but she has never suffered the former to supersede the latter. This book is intended for all classes of society, embracing receipts both for rich and plain cooking, and written in such a plain manner that the most unskilled need not err. Placed in the hands of any servant of common capacity who can read, it will set aside the necessity of those frequent applications for directions, with which the patience of housekeepers is often tried. The experienced cook may smile at the minuteness of the directions, but if she has witnessed as much good food spoiled by improper cooking as the writer of these receipts, she will not think she has been too explicit. In regard to the seasoning of food, it has been found impossible to give any exact rules, as so much depends upon the quality of the seasoning and food. The cook should be careful not to have the natural flavor of the food overpowered by the seasoning, and where a variety of spices are used, no one of them should predominate. Independent of the receipts for cookery, we have annexed a collection of miscellaneous receipts relative to housekeeping, which, together with the copious illustrations and directions for carving, we trust will render it of superior usefulness. In conclusion, the writer would give her sincere thanks to those of her friends who have kindly furnished her with their choice and valuable receipts, and to those into whose hands the book may fall, she would ask a fair trial of them before passing judgment. End of preface. Recording by Judd Niven. www.juddniven.com Chapter 1 of The American Housewife. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Judd Niven. The American Housewife by Anonymous. Chapter 1 1. Observations Respecting Meat Meat to be in perfection should be kept a number of days when the weather will admit of it. Beef and mutton should be kept at least a week in cold weather, and poultry three or four days. If the weather is hot, it will keep but a short time. It should be kept in a cool, airy place away from the flies, and if there is any danger of its spoiling, a little salt should be rubbed over it. When meat is frozen, it should be put into lukewarm water and not taken out till the frost is extracted. If there is any frost in it when put to the fire, it will not cook well. The best way to boil it is to put it in cold water and boil it gently, with just water enough to cover it, as it hardens by furious boiling. The part that is to be put up on the table should be down in the pot, as the scum that rises is apt to make the meat look dark. The scum should be taken off as soon as it rises. The liquor in which all kinds of fresh meat is boiled makes a good soup when thickened and seasoned. 
Boiling is the cheapest way of cooking meat, provided you make a soup of the liquor. If not, it is the dearest, as most of the gelatin is extracted by the process of boiling, which is the most nourishing part, and if not used for soup, is completely lost. In roasting meat, only the juices and fat are extracted, but not lost, as the juices make good gravy and the fat is good for various culinary purposes. When it is put down to roast, there should be a little water in the dripping pan. For broiling, the bars of the gridiron should be perfectly clean and greased with lard or butter, otherwise the meat will retain the impression of the bars. The bars of the gridiron should be concave and terminate in a trough to catch the juices, or they will drop in the fire and smoke the meat. A good fire of hot coals is necessary to have the meat broil as quick as possible without burning. The gridiron should be put on the fire and well heated before the heat is laid on it. The dish should be very hot on which broiled meat is put, and it should not be seasoned till taken up. If you wish to fry meat, cut a small piece of pork into slices and fry them a light brown, then take them up and put in your meat, which should be perfectly dry. When the meat is sufficiently fried, take it up, remove the frying pan from the fire to cool, when so, turn in a little cold water for the gravy, put it on the fire. When it boils, stir in a little mixed flour and water, let it boil, then turn it over the meat. If not rich enough, add butter and ketchup if you like. 2. Roast Beef The tenderloin and first and second cuts off the rack are the best roasting pieces. The third and fourth cuts are good. When the meat is put to the fire, a little salt should be sprinkled on it, and the bony side turned towards the fire first. When the bones get well heated through, turn the meat and keep a brisk fire, baste it frequently while roasting. There should be a little water put into the dripping pan when the meat is put down to roast. If it is a thick piece, allow 15 minutes to each pound to roast it in. If thin, less time will be required. 3. Beef Steak The tenderloin is the best piece for broiling. A steak from the round or shoulder clod is good and comes cheaper. If the beef is not very tender, it should be laid on a board and pounded before broiling or frying it. Wash it in cold water, then lay it on a gridiron. Place it on a hot bed of coals and broil it as quick as possible without burning it. If broiled slow, it will not be good. It takes from 15 to 20 minutes to broil a steak. For 7 or 8 pounds of beef, cut up about a quarter of a pound of butter. Heat the platter very hot that the steak is to be put on. Lay the butter on it. Take up the steak, salt and pepper it on both sides. Beef steak to be good should be eaten as soon as cooked. A few slices of salt pork broiled with the steak makes a rich gravy with very little butter. There should always be a trough to catch the juices of the meat when broiled. The same pieces that are good broiled are good for frying. Fry a few slices of salt pork, brown, then take them up and put in the beef. When brown on both sides, take it up. Take the pan off from the fire to let the fat cool. When cool, turn in half a teacup of water. Mix a couple of teaspoonfuls of flour with a little water, stir it into the fat, put the pan back on the fire, stir it till it boils up, then turn it over the beef. 4. Alamode Beef The round of beef is the best piece to alamode. The shoulder clod is good and comes lower. It is also good stewed without any spices. For 5 pounds of beef, soak about a pound of bread in cold water till soft. Then, drain off the water, mash the bread fine, put in a piece of butter of the size of a hen's egg, half a teaspoonful of salt, the same quantity of ground cloves, allspice and pepper, half a nutmeg, a couple of eggs, and a tablespoonful of flour. Mix the whole well together. Then, cut gashes in the beef and fill them with about half of the dressing. Put the meat in a bake pan with lukewarm water enough to cover it. Set it where it will stew gently for a couple of hours. Cover it with a heated baked pan lid. When it has stewed a couple of hours, turn the reserve dressing on top of the meat. Heat the baked pan lid hot enough to brown the dressing. Stew it an hour and a half longer. After the meat is taken up, if the gravy is not thick enough, mix a teaspoonful or two of flour with a little water and stir it into the gravy. Put in a little butter, a wine glass of wine, and turn it over the meat. 5. Beef Liver Liver is very good fried, but the best way to cook it is to broil it 10 minutes with 4 or 5 slices of salt pork. 
Then take it, cut it into small strips together with the pork. Put it in a stew pan with a little water, butter and pepper. Stew it for four or five minutes. 6. To Corn Beef To every gallon of cold water, put a quart of rock salt, an ounce of saltpeter, quarter of a pound of brown sugar. Some people use molasses, but it's not as good. No boiling is necessary. Put the beef in the brine. As long as any salt remains at the bottom of the cask, it is strong enough. Whenever any scum rises, the brine should be scalded, skimmed, and more sugar, salt, and saltpeter added. When a piece of beef is put in the brine, rub a little salt over it. If the weather is hot, cut a gash to the bone of the meat and fill it with salt. Put a heavy weight on the beef in order to keep it under the brine. In very hot weather, it is difficult to corn beef in cold brine before it spoils. On this account, it is good to corn it in the pot when boiled. It is done in the following manner. To six or eight pounds of beef, put a teacup of salt, sprinkle flour on the side that is to go up on the table, and put it down in the pot. Turn the water into the pot after the beef is put in. Boil it a couple of hours, then turn in more cold water and boil it an hour and a half longer. 7. Mutton The saddle is the best part to roast. The shoulder and leg are good roasted, but the best mode to cook the latter is to boil it with a piece of salt pork. A little rice boiled with it improves the looks of it. Mutton for roasting should have a little butter rubbed on it and a little salt and pepper sprinkled on it. Some people like cloves and allspice. Put a small piece of butter in the dripping pan and baste it frequently. The bony side should be turned towards the fire first and roasted. For boiling or roasting mutton, allow a quarter of an hour to each pound of meat. The leg is good cut in gashes and filled with a dressing and baked. The dressing is made of soaked bread, a little butter, salt and pepper, and a couple of eggs. A pint of water with a little butter should be put in the pan. The leg is also good, cut into slices and broiled. It is good corned a few days and then boiled. The rack is good for broiling. It should be divided, each bone by itself, broiled quick and buttered, salted and peppered. The breast of mutton is nice baked. The joints of the brisket should be separated, the sharp ends of the ribs sawed off. The outside rubbed over with a little piece of butter, salt it, and put it in a bake pan with a pint of water. When done, take it up and thicken the gravy with a little flour and water and put in a small piece of butter. A tablespoonful of ketchup, cloves and allspice improve it but are not essential. The neck of mutton makes a good soup. Parsley or celery heads are a pretty garnish for mutton. 8. Veal The loin of veal is the best piece for roasting. The breast and rack are good roasted. The breast also is good made into a pot pie, and the rack cut into small pieces and broiled. The leg is nice for frying, and when several slices have been cut off for cutlets, the remainder is nice boiled with a small piece of salt pork. Veal for roasting should be salted, peppered, and a little butter rubbed on it and basted frequently. Put a little water in the dripping pan, and unless the meat is quite fat, a little butter should be put in. The filet is good baked. The bone should be cut out and the place filled with a dressing made of bread soaked soft in cold water, a little salt, pepper, a couple of eggs, and a tablespoonful of melted butter put in. Then sew it up, put it in your bake pan with about a pint of water. Cover the top of the meat with some of the dressing. When baked sufficiently, take it up. Thicken the gravy with a little flour and water well mixed. Put in a small piece of butter and a little wine and ketchup if you like the gravy rich. 9. Veal Cutlets Fry three or four slices of pork until brown, then take them up, then put in slices of veal, about an inch thick, cut from the leg. When brown on both sides, take them up. Stir half a pint of water into the gravy, then mix two or three teaspoonfuls of flour with a little water and stir it in. Soak a couple of slices of toasted bread in the gravy. Lay them on the bottom of the platter. Place the meat and pork over it, then turn on the gravy. A very nice way to cook the cutlets is to make a batter with half a pint of milk, an egg beaten to a fourth, and flour enough to render it thick. When the veal is fried brown, dip it into the batter, then put it back into the fat and fry it until brown again. If you have any batter left, it is nice dropped by the large spoonful into the fat and fried till brown, then laid over the veal. Thicken the gravy and turn it over the whole. It takes about an hour to cook this dish. If the meat is tough, it will be better to stew it half an hour before frying it. 10. Calf's Head 
Boil the head two hours together with the lights and feet. Put in the liver when it has boiled an hour and twenty minutes. Before the head is done, tie the brains in a bag and boil them with it. When the brains are done, take them up, season them with salt, pepper, butter, and sweet herbs or spices if you like. Use this as a dressing for the head. Some people prefer part of the liver and feet for dressing. They are prepared like the brains. The liquor that the calf's head is boiled in makes a good soup, seasoned in a plain way like any other veal soup, or seasoned turtle fashion. The liquor should stand until the next day after the head is boiled, in order to have the fat rise, and skimmed off. If you wish to have your calf's head look brown, take it up when tender, rub a little butter over it, sprinkle on salt, pepper, and allspice, sprinkle flour over it, and put before the fire with a Dutch oven over it, or in a brick oven where it will brown quick. Warm up the brains with a little water, butter, salt, and pepper. Add wine and spices if you like. Serve it up as a dressing for the head. Calf's head is also good baked. Have it, rub butter over it, put it in a pan with about a quarter of water, then cover it with a dressing made of bread soaked soft, a little butter, an egg, and season it with salt, pepper, and powdered mace. Slice up the brains and lay them in the pan with the head. Bake it in a quick oven and garnish it with slices of lemon or force meatballs. 11. Force Meatballs Chop a pound or two of veal fine. Mix it with one or two eggs, a little butter or raw pork chopped fine. Season it with salt and pepper or curry powder. Do them up into balls about the size of half an egg and fry them brown. 12. Calf's Feet Boil them with the head until tender, then split and lay them round the head, or dredge them with flour after they have been boiled tender, and fry them brown. If you wish for gravy for them, when you have taken them up, stir a little flour into the fat they were fried in, season it with salt, pepper, and mace. Add a little butter and wine if you like, then turn it over the feet. 13. Calf's Liver and Heart Are good broiled or fried. Some people like the liver stuffed and baked. 14. Collops Cut part of a leg of veal into pieces, three or four inches broad. Sprinkle flour on them, fry them in butter until brown, then turn in water enough to cover the veal. When it boils, take off the scum, put in two or three onions, a blade of mace, a little salt and pepper. When stewed tender, take up the meat, thicken the gravy with flour and water, mix smoothly together. Squeeze in the juice of half a lemon, then turn it over the collops. Garnish them with the lemon cut in thin slices. 15. Plaw Boil a piece of lean veal till tender. Take it up, cut it into strips three or four inches long, put it back into the pot with the liquor it was boiled in, with a teacup of rice to three pounds of veal. Put in a piece of butter of the size of a hen's egg. Season it with salt, pepper, and sweet herbs if you like. Stew it gently till the rice is tender and the water nearly stewed away. A little curry powder in this converts it into a curry dish. 16. A Fillet of Veal Cut off the shank of a leg of veal and cut gashes in the remainder. Make a dressing of bread soaked soft in cold water and mashed. Season it with salt, pepper, and sweet herbs. Chop a little raw pork fine, put it in the dressing, and if you have not pork, use a little butter instead. Fill the gashes in the meat with part of the dressing. Put it in a bake pan with just enough water to cover it. Put the remainder of the dressing on top of the meat and cover it with a heated bake pan lid. For six pounds of veal, allow two hours steady baking. A leg of veal is nice prepared in this manner and roasted. 17. Lamb The fore and hind quarters are good roasting pieces. Sprinkle salt and pepper on the lamb. Turn the bony side towards the fire first. If not fat, rub a little butter on it and put a little in the dripping pan. Baste it frequently. These pieces are good stuffed like a fillet of veal and roasted. The leg is also good cooked in the same manner, but it is better boiled with a pound of salt pork. Allow 15 minutes boiling to each pound of meat. The breast of lamb is good roasted, broiled, or corned and boiled. It is also good made into a pot pie. The forequarter, with the ribs divided, is good broiled. The bones of this, as well as all the kinds of meat, when put down to broil, should first be put towards the fire and browned before the other side is broiled. A little salt, pepper, and butter should be put on it when you take it up. 
Lamb is very apt to spoil in warm weather. If you wish to keep a leg several days, put it in brine. It should not be put with pork, as fresh meat is apt to injure it. Lamb's head, feet, and heart are good, boiled till tender. Then cut off the flesh from the head. Cut up the heart and split the feet in two. Put the whole into a pan with a pint of the liquor they were boiled in, together with a little butter, pepper, salt, and a half a teacup of tomato ketchup. Thicken the gravy with a little flour. Stew the whole for a few moments. Peppergrass or parsley are a pretty garnish for this dish. End of chapter 1 Recording by Judd Niven www.juddniven.com The American Housewife This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ruth Golding The American Housewife by Anonymous Chapter 2 18. Shoulder of Lamb Grilled The shoulder of lamb is good roasted plain, but is better cooked in the following manner. Score it in checkers about an inch long, rub it over with a little butter and the yolk of an egg. Then dip it into finely pounded bread crumbs. Sprinkle on salt, pepper, and sweet herbs. Roast it till of a light brown. This is good with plain gravy, but better with a sauce made in the following manner. Take a quarter of a pint of the drippings from the meat. Mix it with the same quantity of water. Set it on the fire. When it boils up, thicken it with a little flour and water mixed. Put in a tablespoonful of tomato catsup, the juice and grated rind of a lemon. Season it with salt and pepper. 19. Lamb's Fry The heart and sweetbread are nice fried plainly, or dipped into a beaten egg and fine bread crumbs. They should be fried in lard. 20. Turkey Take out the innards. Wash both the inside and outside of the turkey. Prepare a dressing made of bread, soaked soft in cold water. The water should be drained from the bread and the bread mashed fine. Melt a small piece of butter and mix it with the dressing, or else put in salt pork chopped fine. Season it with salt and pepper, add sweet herbs if you like. An egg in the dressing makes it cut smoother. Any kind of cooked meat is nice minced fine and mixed with the dressing. If the innards are used, they ought to be boiled very tender as it is very difficult to cook them through while the turkey is roasting. Fill the crop and body of the turkey with the dressing, sew it up, tie up the legs and wings, rub on a little salt and butter. Roast it from two to three hours according to its size. Twenty-five minutes to every pound is a good rule. The turkey should be roasted slowly at first and basted frequently. A little water should be put into the dripping pan when the meat is put down to roast. For a gravy to the turkey, take the liquor that the innards are boiled in, put into it a little of the turkey drippings, set it where it will boil, thicken it with a little flour and water previously mixed smooth. Season it with salt, pepper, and sweet herbs if you like. Drawn butter is used for boiled turkey. A turkey for boiling should be prepared in the same manner as one for roasting. If you wish to have it look white, tie it up in a cloth unless you boil rice in the pot. If rice is used, put in two-thirds of a teacup. A pound or two of salt pork, boiled with the turkey, improves it. If you wish to make a soup of the liquor in which the turkey is boiled, let it remain until the next day. Then skim off the fat. Heat and season it. 21. Goose If a goose is tender under the wing, and you can break the skin easily by running the head of a pin across the breast, there is no danger of its being tough. A goose should be dressed in the same manner and roasted the same length of time as a turkey. 22. Chickens 
Chickens for roasting or boiling should have a dressing prepared like that for turkeys. Half a teacup of rice boiled with the chickens makes them look white. They will be less liable to break if the water is cold when they are put in. A little salt pork boiled with the chickens improves them. If you do not boil pork with them, they will need salt. Chickens for broiling should be split, the innards taken out, and the chicken washed inside and out. Put the bony side down on the gridiron and broil it very slowly until brown. Then turn it and brown it on the other side. About forty minutes is required to broil a common-sized chicken. For roast chicken, boil the liver and gizzards by themselves and use the water for gravy to the chickens. Cut the innards in slices and put them in the gravy. 23. Fricassee The chickens should be jointed, the innards taken out, and the chickens washed. Put them in a stew pan with the skin side down. On each layer sprinkle salt and pepper. Put in three or four slices of pork, just cover them with water, and let them stew till tender. Then take them up, mix a little flour and water together, and thicken the liquor they were stewed in. Add a piece of butter, of the size of a hen's egg, then put the chickens back in the stew pan, and let them stew four or five minutes longer. When you have taken up the chickens, soak two or three slices of toast in the gravy, then put them in your platter, lay the chickens over the toast, and turn the gravy on them. If you wish to brown the chickens, stew them without the pork till tender, then fry the pork brown, take it up, put in the chickens, and then fry until a light brown. 24. Pigeons Take out the innards, and stuff the pigeons with a dressing prepared like that for turkeys. Lay them in a pot with the breast side down. Turn in more than enough water to cover them. When stewed nearly tender, put in a quarter of a pound of butter to every dozen of pigeons. Mix two or three teaspoonsful of flour with a little water, and stir into the gravy. If you wish to brown them, put on a heated bake-pan lid an hour before they are done, or else take them up when tender, and fry them in pork fat. They are very good split open and stewed, with a dressing made and warmed up separately with a little of the gravy. Tender pigeons are good stuffed and roasted. It takes about two hours to cook tender pigeons, and three hours tough ones. Roast pigeons should be buttered when put to the fire. 25. Ducks Are good stewed like pigeons, or roasted. Two or three onions in the dressing of wild ducks takes out the fishy taste they are apt to have. If ducks or any other fowls are slightly injured by being kept long, Dip them in weak saleratus water before cooking them. 26. Baked or Roast Pig A pig for roasting or baking should be small and fat. Take out the innards and cut off the first joint of the feet, and boil them till tender, then chop them. Prepare a dressing of bread soaked soft, the water squeezed out, and the bread mashed fine. Season it with salt, pepper, and sweet herbs, add a little butter, and fill the pig with the dressing. Rub a little butter on the outside of the pig to prevent its blistering. Bake or roast it from two hours and a half to three hours. The pan that the pig is baked in should have a little water put in it. When cooked, take out a little of the dressing and gravy from the pan, mix it with the chopped innards and feet, Put in a little butter, pepper, and salt, and use this for a sauce to the pig. Expose the pig to the open air two or three minutes before it is put on the table to make it crispy. 27. Sweetbread, liver, and heart. A very good way to cook the sweetbread is to fry three or four slices of pork till brown, then take them up and put in the sweetbread, and fry it over a moderate fire. When you have taken up the sweet bread, mix a couple of teaspoons full of flour with a little water, and stir it into the fat. Let it boil, then turn it over the sweet bread. 
Another way is to parboil them, and let them get cold. Then cut them in pieces about an inch thick. Dip them in the yolk of an egg and fine bread crumbs. Sprinkle salt, pepper, and sage on them before dipping them in the egg. Fry them a light brown. Make a gravy after you have taken them up by stirring a little flour and water mixed smooth into the fat. Add spices and wine if you like. The liver and heart are good cooked in the same manner or broiled. 28. Pressed Head Pig's head is good baked with beans or corned and smoked. It is also nice prepared with spices in the following manner. Boil the ears, forehead, and rind. The cheek is good, but it is better corned and smoked. Till the meat will almost drop from the bones. Take them up. When cold, cut the meat in strips about an inch long. Warm it in a little of the liquor in which the meat was boiled. Season it with salt, pepper, cloves, nutmeg, and cinnamon. Put it, while hot, in a strong bag. Put a heavy weight upon it, and let it remain till perfectly cold. When you wish to eat it, cut it in thin slices. 29. Souse Take pig's ears and feet. Clean them thoroughly, then soak them in salt and water for several days. Boil them tender and split them. They are then good fried. If you wish to souse them when cold, turn boiling vinegar on them, spiced with peppercorns and mace. Cloves improve the taste, but it turns them a dark colour. Add a little salt. They will keep good pickled five or six weeks. Fry them in lard. 30. Tripe After being scoured, should be soaked in salt and water seven or eight days, changing the water every other day. Then boil it till tender, which will take eight or ten hours. It is then fit for broiling, frying, or pickling. It is pickled in the same manner as souse. 31. Sausages Chop fresh pork very fine, the lean and fat together. There should be rather more of the lean than the fat. Season it highly with salt, pepper, sage, and other sweet herbs, if you like them. A little saltpetre tends to preserve them. To tell whether they are seasoned enough, do up a little into a cake and fry it. If not seasoned enough, add more seasoning, and fill your skins, which should be previously cleaned thoroughly. A little flour mixed in with the meat tends to prevent the fat from running out when cooked. Sausage meat is good done up in small cakes and fried. In summer, when fresh pork cannot be procured, very good sausage cakes may be made of raw beef, chopped fine with salt pork, and seasoned with pepper and sage. When sausages are fried, they should not be pricked, and they will cook nicer to have a little fat put in the frying pan with them. They should be cooked slowly. If you do not like them very fat, take them out of the pan when nearly done, and finish cooking them on a gridiron. Bologna sausages are made of equal weight each of ham, veal, and pork, chopped very fine, seasoned high, and boiled in casings till tender, then dried. 32. Ham A ham that weighs ten pounds should be boiled four or five hours. If very salt, the water should be changed. Before it is put on the table, take off the rind. If you wish to ornament it, put whole cloves or pepper in the form of diamonds over it. The Virginia method of curing hams, which is considered very superior, is to dissolve two ounces of saltpetre, two teaspoons full of saleratus, in a salt pickle as strong as possible for every sixteen pounds of ham, add molasses in the proportion of a gallon to a hogshead of brine, then put in the hams, and let them remain three or four weeks. Then take them out of the brine and smoke them with the hocks downwards to preserve the juices. They will smoke tolerably well in the course of a month, but they will be much better to remain in the smoke-house two or three months. 
Hams cured in this manner are very fine flavoured, and will keep good a long time. 33. Tongues Cut off the roots of the tongues. They are not good smoked, but they make nice pies. Take out the pipes and veins, boil them till tender, mince them fine, season the meat with salt, cloves, mace and cinnamon, put in a little sugar and molasses, moisten the whole with brandy, put it in a cool place and it will keep good several months in cold weather, and is good to make pies of at any time, with the addition of apples chopped fine and a little butter melted. For the remainder of the tongues, make a brine in the following manner. To a gallon of cold water, put a quart of rock salt, an ounce of saltpetre, quarter of a pound of sugar, and a couple of tablespoons full of blown salt. Put in the tongues, let them remain in it a week, and then smoke them eight or ten days. 34. Curries Chickens, pigeons, mutton chops, lobsters, and veal all make good curries. If the curry dish is to be made of fowls, they should be jointed. Boil the meat till tender in just sufficient water to cover it, and add a little salt. Just before the meat is boiled enough to take up, fry three or four slices of pork till brown. Take them up and put in the chickens. Let them brown, then add part of the liquor in which they were boiled, one or two teaspoons full of curry powder, and the fried pork. Mix a teaspoonful of curry powder with a teacup of boiled rice, or a little flour and water mixed. Turn it on to the curry, and let it stew a few minutes. End of chapter 2 Three of the American Housewife. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ruth Golding. The American Housewife by Anonymous. Chapter 3. 35. Chicken Pie. Joint the chickens, which should be young and tender. Boil them in just sufficient water to cover them. When nearly tender, take them out of the liquor, and lay them in a deep pudding dish lined with pie crust. To each layer of chicken, put three or four slices of pork. Add a little of the liquor in which they were boiled, and a couple of ounces of butter cut into small pieces. Sprinkle a little flour over the whole, cover it with nice pie crust, and ornament the top with some of your pastry. Bake it in a quick oven one hour. 36. Beef and Mutton Pie Take tender meat, pound it out thin, and broil it ten minutes. Then cut off the bony and gristly parts, season it highly with salt and pepper, butter it, and cut it into small pieces. Line a pudding dish with pastry, put in the meat, and to each layer add a teaspoonful of tomato catsup together with a tablespoonful of water. Sprinkle over flour and cover it with pie crust, and ornament as you please with pastry. Cold roast or boiled beef and mutton make a good pie by cutting them into bits and seasoning them highly with salt and pepper. Put them into a pie dish, turn a little melted butter over them or gravy, and pour in water till you can just see it at the top. 37. Chicken and Veal Pot Pie If the pie is to be made of chickens, joint them. Boil the meat until about half done. Take the meat out of the liquor in which it was boiled, and put it in a pot with a layer of crust to each layer of meat, having a layer of crust on the top. The meat should be seasoned with salt and pepper. Cover the whole with the boiled meat liquor. If you wish to have the crust brown, Keep the pot covered with a heated bake-pan lid. Keep a tea-kettle of boiling water to turn in as the water boils away. Cold water makes the crust heavy. The crust for the pie is good like that made for fruit pies, with less shortening, but raised pie crust is generally preferred to any other. 
it is made in the following manner. Mix together three pints of flour, a teacup of melted butter, a teaspoonful of salt. Then turn in half a teacup of yeast. Add cold water to make it sufficiently stiff to roll out. Set it in a warm place to rise, which will take seven or eight hours, unless brewer's yeast is used. When risen, roll it out and cut it into small cakes. Potato pie crust is very nice. To make it, boil eight or nine small potatoes, peel and mash them fine, mix with them a piece of butter of the size of a hen's egg, a teaspoonful of salt, a tumbler full of milk, and flour to render it of the right consistency to roll out. When rolled out, cut them into cakes and put them with the meat. If you happen to have unbaked wheat dough, very good crust may be made of it by working into it a little lukewarm melted butter. Let it remain, after you have rolled and cut it into cakes, about ten or fifteen minutes before putting it with the meat. 38. To Frizzle Beef Take beef that is fresh smoked and tender. Shave it off thin, put it in a stew pan with water enough to cover it, let it stew ten or fifteen minutes. Three or four minutes before it is taken up, mix a little flour and water together, and stir in to thicken the water. Add a little butter and pepper. This makes a good dish for breakfast. Eggs are a nice accompaniment to it. 39. Warmed over meats. Boiled or roasted veal makes a nice dish, chopped fine and warmed up, with just sufficient water to moisten it, and a little butter, salt, and pepper added. A little nutmeg and the grated rind of a lemon improve it. None of the white part of the lemon should be used. When well heated through, take it up on a platter, and garnish it with a couple of lemons cut in slices. Fresh or corned beef is good minced fine with boiled potatoes, and warmed up with salt, pepper, and a little water. Add butter just before you take it up. Some people use the gravy that they have left the day before for the meat, but it is not as good when warmed over, and there is no need of its being wasted, as it can be clarified and used for other purposes. Boiled onions or turnips are good mixed with mincemeat instead of potatoes. Veal, lamb, and mutton are good cut into small strips, and warmed with boiled potatoes cut in slices, pepper, salt, a little water. Add butter just before you take it up. Roast beef and mutton, if not previously cooked too much, are nice cut in slices, and just scorched on a gridiron. Meat, when warmed over, should be on the fire just long enough to get well heated through. If on the fire long, most of the juices of the meat will be extracted, and render it very indigestible. Cold fowls are nice jointed and warmed with a little water, then taken up and fried in butter till brown. A little flour should be sprinkled on them before frying. Thicken the water that the fowls were warmed in, add a little salt, pepper, and butter, and turn it over the fowls. 40. A ragout of cold veal. Cut boiled or roasted veal in nice slices, flour and fry them in butter till a light brown, then take them up and turn a little hot water into the butter they were fried in. Mix a little flour and water together, and stir it into the gravy. Season it with salt, pepper, nutmeg or catsup, and lemon juice. Put in the meat and stew it till very hot. Stew two or three onions with it, if you like. End of chapter 3 Chapter 4 of The American Housewife This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ruth Golding. The American Housewife by Anonymous. Chapter 4 41. Drawn Butter Mix two or three teaspoons full of flour with a little cold water. Stir it till free from lumps, 
thin it and stir it into half a pint of boiling water. Let it boil two or three minutes, then cut up about a quarter of a pound of butter into small pieces and put it with the flour and water. Set it where it will melt gradually. If carefully mixed, it will be free from lumps. If not, strain it before it is put on the table. If the butter is to be eaten on fish, cut up several soft-boiled eggs into it. A little curry powder sprinkled into it will convert it into curry sauce. 42. Burnt Butter Put a couple of ounces of butter into a frying pan, set it on the fire. When of a dark brown colour, put in half a teacup full of vinegar, a little pepper and salt. This is nice for fish, salad or eggs. 43. Roast Meat Gravy Meat, when put down to roast, should have about a pint of water in the dripping pan. A little while before the meat is done, stir up the drippings, put it in a skillet, and set it where it will boil. Mix two or three teaspoons full of flour smoothly with a little water, and stir it in the gravy when it boils. Lamb and veal require a little butter in the gravy. The gravy for pork and geese should have a little of the dressing and sage mixed with it. If you wish to have your gravies look dark, scorch the flour that you thicken them with, which is easily done by putting it in a pan, setting it on a few coals, and stirring it constantly till it is a dark brown colour, taking care that it does not burn. Enough can be burnt at once to last a long time. 44. Sauce for cold meat, fish, or salad. Boil a couple of eggs three minutes, then mix it with a mustard spoonful of made mustard, a little salt, pepper, half a teacup of salad oil or melted butter, and half a teacup of vinegar. A tablespoonful of catsup improves it. 45. Wine sauce for venison or mutton. Warm half a pint of the drippings, or liquor the meat was boiled in. Mix a couple of teaspoons full of scorched flour with a little water, and stir it in when the gravy boils. Season it with salt, pepper, and cloves. Stir a tablespoonful of currant jelly in, and just before you take it from the fire, half a tumbler of wine. Many people prefer melted currant jelly to any other sauce for venison or mutton. 46. Rice sauce. Boil one onion and half a teacup of rice with a blade of mace till very soft, in just water enough to cover it. Then stir in half a pint of milk, a little salt, and strain it. This is a nice accompaniment to game. 47. Oyster sauce. Take the juice of the oysters, and to a pint put a couple of sticks of mace, a little salt, and pepper. Set it on the fire. When it boils, stir in a couple of teaspoons full of flour mixed with milk. When it has boiled several minutes, stir in half a pint of oysters, a piece of butter of the size of a hen's egg. Let them scald through, then take them up. 48. White Celery Sauce for Boiled Poultry Take five or six heads of celery, cut off the green tops, Cut up the remainder into small bits, and boil it till tender, in half a pint of water. Mix two or three teaspoons full of flour smoothly with a little milk, then add half a teacup more of milk, stir it in, add a small lump of butter and a little salt. When it boils, take it up. 49. Brown Sauce for Poultry Peel two or three onions, cut them in slices, flour and fry them brown in a little butter, then sprinkle in a little flour, pepper, salt and sage. Add half a pint of the liquor the poultry was boiled in, and a tablespoonful of catsup. Let it boil up, then stir in half a wine glass of wine, if you like. 50. Savoury Jelly for Cold Meat Boil lean beef or veal till tender. If you have any beef or veal bones, crack and boil them with the meat. They should be boiled longer than the meat, together with a little salt pork, sweet herbs, and pepper and salt. When boiled sufficiently, take it off, 
strain it, and let it remain till the next day. Then skim off the fat, take up the jelly, and scrape off the dregs that adhere to the bottom of it. Put in the whites and shells of several eggs, several blades of mace, a little wine and lemon juice, set it on the fire, stir it well till it boils, then strain it till clear through a jelly bag. 51. Liver Sauce for Fish Boil the liver of the fish, then mash it fine, stir it into drawn butter, put in a little cayenne or black pepper, a couple of teaspoons full of lemon juice, and a tablespoonful of catsup. 52. Sauce for Lobsters Boil a couple of eggs three minutes. Mix them with the spawn of the lobster and a teaspoonful of water. When rubbed smooth, stir in a teaspoonful of mixed mustard, half a teacup of salad oil, or the same quantity of butter melted, a little salt, pepper, and five tablespoons full of vinegar. 53. Chicken Salad Boil a chicken that weighs not more than a pound and a half. When very tender, take it up, cut it in small strips, and make the following sauce, and turn over it. Boil four eggs three minutes, then take them out of the shells, mash and mix them with a couple of tablespoons full of olive oil or melted butter, two-thirds of a tumbler of vinegar, a teaspoonful of mixed mustard, a teaspoonful of salt, a little pepper, and essence of celery if you have it. If not, it can be dispensed with. 54. Sauce for turtle or calf's head. To half a pint of hot melted butter or beef gravy, put the juice and grated rind of half a lemon, a little sage, basil or sweet marjoram, a little cayenne or black pepper, and salt. Add a wine glass of white wine just before you take it up. 55. Apple and Cranberry Sauce Pare and quarter the apples. If not tart, stew them in cider. If tart enough, stew them in water. When stewed soft, put in a small piece of butter and sweeten it to the taste with sugar. Another way, which is very good, is to boil the apples without paring them with a few quinces and molasses in new cider till reduced to half the quantity. When cool, strain the sauce. This kind of sauce will keep good several months. It makes very good plain pies with the addition of a little cinnamon or cloves. To make cranberry sauce, nothing more is necessary than to stew the cranberries till soft, then stir in sugar and molasses to sweeten it. Let the sugar scald in it a few minutes. Strain it if you like. It is very good without straining. 56. Pudding Sauce Stir to a cream a teacup of butter with two of brown sugar, then add a wine glass of wine or cider. Flavour it with nutmeg, rose water, or essence of lemon. If you wish to have it liquid, heat two-thirds of a pint of water boiling hot, mix two or three teaspoons full of flour with a little water, and stir it into the boiling water. As soon as it boils up well, stir it into the butter and sugar. 57. Tomato Soy Take ripe tomatoes and prick them with a fork. Lay them in a deep dish, and to each layer put a layer of salt. Let them remain in it four or five days, then take them out of the salt, and put them in vinegar and water for one night. Drain off the vinegar, and to each peck of tomatoes put half a pint of mustard seed, half an ounce of cloves, and the same quantity of pepper. The tomatoes should be put in a jar, with a layer of sliced onions to each layer of the tomatoes, and the spices sprinkled over each layer. In ten days they will be in good eating order. 58. Tomato Catsup To a gallon of ripe tomatoes, put four tablespoons full of salt, four of ground black pepper, three tablespoons full of ground mustard, half a tablespoonful of allspice, half a spoonful of cloves, six red peppers, ground fine. Simmer the whole slowly with a pint of vinegar three or four hours, then strain it through a sieve, bottle and cork it tight. 
the catsup should be made in a tin utensil, and the later in the season it is made, the less liable it will be to spoil. 59. Mushroom Catsup Put a layer of fresh mushrooms in a deep dish, sprinkle a little salt over them, then put in another layer of fresh mushrooms and salt, and so on till you get in all the mushrooms. Let them remain several days, then mash them fine, and to each quart put a tablespoonful of vinegar, half a teaspoonful of black pepper, and a quarter of a teaspoonful of cloves. Turn it into a stone jar, set the jar in a pot of boiling water, and let it boil two hours, then strain it without squeezing the mushrooms. Boil the juice a quarter of an hour, skim it well, let it stand a few hours to settle, then turn it off carefully through a sieve, bottle and cork it tight. Keep it in a cool place. 60. Walnut Catsup Procure the walnuts by the last of June. Keep them in salt and water for a week, then bruise them and turn boiling vinegar on them. Let them remain covered with vinegar for several days, stirring them up each day. Then boil them a quarter of an hour with a little more vinegar, strain it through a thick cloth, so that none of the coarse particles of the walnuts will go through. Season the vinegar highly with cloves, allspice, pepper, and salt. Boil the whole a few minutes, then bottle and cork it tight. Keep it in a cool place. 61. Curry Powder Mix an ounce of ginger, one of mustard, one of pepper, three of coriander seed, the same quantity of turmeric, a quarter of an ounce of cayenne pepper, half an ounce of cardamoms, and the same of cumin seed and cinnamon. Pound the whole fine, sift, and keep it in a bottle, corked tight. 62. Essence of Celery Steep an ounce of celery seed in half a pint of brandy or vinegar. A few drops of this will give a fine flavour to soups and sauce for fowls. End of chapter 4 Of the American Housewife This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Stuart Bell The American Housewife by Anonymous Chapter 5 63. Soup Herb Spirit those who like a variety of herbs in soup will find it very convenient to have the following mixture. Take, when in their prime, thyme, sweet marjoram, sweet basil, and summer savoury. When thoroughly dried, pound and sift them. Steep them in brandy for a fortnight. The spirit will then be fit for use. 64. Plain Veal Soup a leg of veal, after enough has been cut off for cutlets, makes a soup nearly as good as calf's head. Boil it with a cup two-thirds full of rice, a pound and a half of pork, season it with salt, pepper, and sweet herbs if you like. A little celery boiled in it gives the soup a fine flavour. Some people like onions, carrots, and parsley boiled in it. If you wish for balls in the soup, Chop veal and a little raw salt pork fine, mix it with a few bread crumbs and a couple of eggs. Season it with salt and pepper, add a little curry powder if you like, do it up into small balls and boil them in the soup. The veal should be taken up before the soup is seasoned. Just before the soup is taken up, put in a couple of slices of toast cut into small pieces. If you do not like your soup fat, let the liquor remain till the day after you have boiled the meat and skim off the fat before heating the liquor. The shoulder of veal makes a good soup. 65. Mock turtle or calf's head soup. Boil the head until perfectly tender. Then take it out, strain the liquor, and set it away until the next day. Then skim off the fat, cut up the meat, together with the lights, and put it into the liquor, 
put it on the fire and season it with salt, pepper, cloves and mace. Add onions and sweet herbs if you like. Stew it gently for half an hour. Just before you take it up, add half a pint of white wine. For the balls, chop lean veal fine with a little salt pork, add the brains and season it with salt, pepper, cloves, mace, sweet herbs or curry powder. Make it up into balls about the size of half an egg. Boil part in the soup and fry the remainder and put them in a dish by themselves. 66. Beef or Black Soup The shank of beef is the best part for soup. Cold roast beef bones and beef steak make very good soup. Boil the shank four or five hours in water, enough to cover it. Half an hour before the soup is put on the table, take up the meat, Thicken the soup with scorched flour mixed with cold water. Season it with salt, pepper, cloves, mace, a little walnut or tomato ketchup improves it. Put in sweet herbs or herb spirit if you like. Some cooks boil onions in the soup, but as they are very disagreeable to many persons, it is better to boil and serve them up in a dish by themselves. Make force meat balls of part of the beef and pork. Season them with mace, cloves, pepper and salt and boil them in the soup 15 minutes. 67. Chicken or Turkey Soup The liquor that a turkey or chicken is boiled in makes a good soup. If you do not like your soup fat, let the liquor remain till the day after the poultry has been boiled in it, then skim off the fat, set it where it will boil. If there was not any rice boiled with the meat, put in half a teacupful when the liquor boils, or slice up a few potatoes and put in. Season it with salt and pepper, sweet herbs, and a little celery boiled in it improves it. Toast bread or crackers, and put them in the soup when you take it up. 68. Oyster Soup Separate the oysters from the liquor. To each quart of the liquor, put a pint of milk or water. Set it on the fire with the oysters. Mix a heaping tablespoonful of flour with a little water and stir it into the liquor as soon as it boils. Season it with salt, pepper and a little walnut or butternut vinegar if you have it. If not, common vinegar may be substituted. Put in a small lump of butter and turn it as soon as it boils up again onto buttered toast cut into small pieces. 69. Pea Soup if you make your soup of dry peas, soak them overnight in a warm place using a quart of water to each quart of the peas. Early the next morning, boil them an hour. Boil with them a teaspoonful of saleratus, eight or ten minutes, then take them out of the water they were soaking in, put them into fresh water with a pound of salt pork and boil it till the peas are soft, which will be in the course of three or four hours. Green peas for soup require no soaking and boiling only long enough to have the pork get thoroughly cooked, which will be in the course of an hour. 70. Portable Soup Take beef or veal soup and let it get perfectly cold, then skim off every particle of the grease. Set it on the fire and let it boil till of a thick, glutinous consistence. Care should be taken that it does not burn. Season it highly with salt, pepper, cloves and mace. Add a little wine or brandy and then turn it onto earthen platters. It should not be more than a quarter of an inch in thickness. Let it remain until cold, then cut it in pieces three inches square. Set them in the sun to dry, turning them frequently. When perfectly dry, put them in an earthen or tin vessel, having a layer of white paper between each layer. These, if the directions are strictly attended to, will keep good a long time. Whenever you wish to make a soup of them, nothing more is necessary than to put a quart of water to one of the cakes and heat it very hot. 71. To boil eggs. They should be put into boiling water, and if you wish to have them soft, boil them only three minutes. If you wish to have them hard enough to cut in slices, boil them five minutes. Another way, which is very nice, is to break the shells and drop the eggs into a pan of scalding hot water. Let it stand till the white is set, then put the pan on a moderate fire. 
When the water boils up, the eggs are cooked sufficiently. Eggs look very prettily cooked in this way, the yolk being just visible through the white. If you do not use the eggs for a garnish, serve them up with burnt butter. See receipt for making number 42. 72. Omelette. Beat the eggs to a froth, and to a dozen of eggs put three ounces of finely minced boiled ham, beef, or veal. If the latter meat is used, add a little salt. Melt a quarter of a pound of butter. Mix a little of it with the eggs. It should be just lukewarm. Set the remainder of the butter on the fire in a frying or tin pan. When quite hot, turn in the eggs beaten to a froth, stir them until they begin to set. When brown on the underside, it is sufficiently cooked. The omelette should be cooked on a moderate fire and in a pan small enough to have the omelette an inch thick. When you take them up, lay a flat dish on them, then turn the pan upside down. 73. Poached Eggs Break the eggs into a pan, beat them to a froth, then put them into a buttered tin pan, set the pan on a few coals, put in a small lump of butter, a little salt, let them cook very slowly, stirring them constantly till they become quite thick, then turn them onto buttered toast. End of chapter 5. Recording by Stuart Bell, Cambridge, UK. Section 6 of The American Housewife. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bologna Times. The American Housewife by Anonymous. Section 6. Chapter 74. Directions for Broiling, Boiling, and Frying Fish. Fish for boiling or broiling are the best the day after they are caught. They should be cleaned when first caught, washed in cold water, and half a teacup of salt sprinkled on the inside of them. If they are to be broiled, sprinkle pepper on the inside of them. Keep them in a cool place. When fish is broiled, the bars of the gridiron should be rubbed over with a little butter, and the inside of the fish put towards the fire, and not turned till the fish is nearly cooked through. Then butter the skin side, and turn it over. Fish should be broiled slowly. When fresh fish is to be boiled, it should either be laid on a fish drainer, or sewed up in a cloth. If not, it is very difficult to take it out of the pot without breaking. Put the fish into cold water, with the backbone down. To eight or ten pounds of fish, put half a small teacup of salt. Boil the fish until you can draw out one of the fins easily. Most kinds of fish will boil sufficiently in the course of twenty or thirty minutes. Some kinds will boil in less time. Some cooks do not put their fish into the water till it boils, but it is not a good plan, as the outside gets cooked too much and breaks to pieces before the inside is sufficiently done. Fish for frying, after being cleaned and washed, should be put into a cloth to have it absorb the moisture. They should be dried perfectly, and a little flour rubbed over them. No salt should be put on them if you wish to have them brown well. For five or six pounds of fish, fry three or four slices of salt pork. When brown, take them up, and if they do not make fat sufficient to fry the fish in, add a little lard. When the fish are fried enough, take them up, and for good plain gravy, mix two or three teaspoons full of flour with a little water, and stir it into the fat the fish was fried in. Put in a little butter, pepper, and salt, if you wish to have the gravy rich. Add spices, catsup, and wine. Turn the gravy over the fish. Boiled fish should be served up with drawn butter or liver sauce. See directions for making each, numbers 41 and 51. Fish, when put on the platter, should not be laid over each other, if it can be avoided, as the steam from the under ones makes those on the top so moist that they will break to pieces when served out. 
Great care and punctuality is necessary in cooking fish. If not done sufficiently, or if done too much, they are not good. They should be eaten as soon as cooked. For a garnish to the fish, use parsley, a lemon, or eggs boiled hard and cut in slices. Chapter 75. Chowder. Fry three or four slices of pork till brown. Cut each of your fish into five or six slices. Flour, and put a layer of them in your pork fat. Sprinkle on pepper and a little salt. Add cloves, mace, and sliced onions if you like. Lay on several bits of your fried pork, and crackers previously soaked soft in cold water. This process repeat till you get in all the fish, then turn on water enough to just cover them. Put on a heated bake pan lid. When the fish have stewed about twenty minutes, take them up and mix a couple of teaspoonsful of flour with a little water, and stir it into the gravy, also a little butter and pepper. Half a pint of white wine, spices, and catsup will improve it. Bass and cod make the best chowder. Blackfish and clams make tolerably good ones. The hard part of the clams should be cut off and thrown away. 76. Stuffed and Baked Fish Soak bread in cold water till soft. Drain off the water. Mash the bread fine. Mix it with a tablespoonful of melted butter, a little pepper and salt, a couple of raw eggs makes the dressing cut smoother. Add spices if you like. Fill the fish with the dressing, sew it up, put a teacup of water in your bake pan and a small piece of butter. Lay in the fish, bake it from forty to fifty minutes. Fresh cod, bass, and shad are suitable fish for baking. 77. Codfish Fresh cod is good boiled fried, or made into a chowder. It is too dry a fish to broil. Salt cod should be soaked in lukewarm water till the skin will come off easily. Then take up the fish, scrape off the skin, and put it in fresh water, and set it on a very moderate fire, where it will keep warm without boiling, as it hardens by boiling. It takes between three and four hours to cook it soft. Serve it up with drawn butter, Cold salt codfish is nice minced fine, and mixed with mashed potatoes, and warmed up with just water enough to moisten it, and considerable butter. It makes a nice dish for breakfast, prepared in the following manner. Pull the fish into small pieces, soak it an hour in warm water, then drain off the water, put a little milk and butter to it, stew it a few minutes, and serve it up with soft-boiled eggs. 78. Cod Sounds and Tongues Soak them four or five hours in lukewarm water. Then take them out of the water, scrape off the skin, cut them once in two, and stew them in a little milk. Just before they are taken up, stir in butter and a little flour. 79. Halibut Is nice cut in slices, salted and peppered, and broiled or fried, the fins and thick part is good boiled. 80. Striped and Sea Bass Bass are good fried, boiled, broiled, or made into a chowder. 81. Blackfish Are the best boiled or fried. They will do to broil, but are not so good as cooked in any other way. 82. Shad Fresh shad are good baked or boiled, but better broiled. For broiling they should have a good deal of salt and pepper sprinkled on the inside of them, and remain several hours before broiling. The spawn and liver are good boiled or fried. Salt shad and mackerel, for broiling, should be soaked ten or twelve hours in cold water. Salt shad, for boiling, need not be soaked only long enough to get off the scales, without you like them quite fresh. If so, turn boiling water on them, and let them soak in it an hour. Then put them into fresh boiling water, and boil them 
twenty minutes. To pickle shad, mix one pound of sugar, a peck of rock salt, two quarts of blown salt, and a quarter of a pound of saltpetre. Allow this quantity to every twenty-five shad. Put a layer of the mixture at the bottom of the keg, then a layer of cleaned shad, with the skin side down. Sprinkle on another layer of salt, sugar, and saltpetre, and so on till you get in all the shad. Lay a heavy weight on the shad to keep it under the brine. If the juice of the shad does not run out so as to form brine sufficient to cover them, in the course of a week, make a little brine and turn on to them. 83. Sturgeons Sturgeons are good boiled or baked, but better fried. Before baking it, boil it about fifteen minutes to extract the strong oily taste, and when baked, to eight or ten pounds of it, put a quart of water into the pan and bake it till tender. See directions for baking fish, number 76. The part next to the tail is the best for baking or frying. Sturgeons are very nice cooked in the following manner. Cut it in slices nearly an inch thick. Fry a few slices of pork. When brown, take them up and put in the sturgeon. When a good brown color, take them up and stir in a little flour and water. Mix smoothly together. Season the gravy with salt, pepper, and catsup. Stir in a little butter and wine if you like. Then put back the sturgeon and let it stew a few minutes in the gravy. While the sturgeon is cooking, make force meat balls of part of the sturgeon and salt pork. Fry and use them as a garnish for the fish. 84. Fish Cakes Cold, boiled, fresh fish, or salt codfish, is nice minced fine, with potatoes, moistened with a little water and a little butter put in, done up into cakes of the size of common biscuit, and fried brown in pork fat or butter. 85. Fish Forcemeat Balls Take a little uncooked fish, chop it fine, together with a little raw salt pork, mix it with one or two raw eggs, a few bread crumbs, and season the whole with pepper and spices. Add a little catsup if you like, do them up into small balls, and fry them till brown. 86. Lobsters and Crabs Put them into boiling water, and boil them from half to three-quarters of an hour, according to their size. Boil half a teacup of salt with every four pounds of the fish. When cold, crack the shell, and take out the meat, taking care to extract the blue veins, and what is called the lady in the lobster, as they are very unhealthy. If the fish are not eaten cold, warm them up with a little water, vinegar, salt, pepper, and butter. The following way of dressing lobsters looks very prettily. Pick out the spawn and red cord, mash them fine, rub them through a sieve, put in a little butter and salt. Cut the lobsters into squares, and warm it, together with the spawn, over a moderate fire. When hot, take it up, and garnish it with parsley. The cord and spawn are a handsome garnish for any kind of fish. 87. Scallops are nice boiled, and then fried, or boiled, and pickled, in the same manner as oysters. Take them out of the shells. When boiled, pick out the hearts, and throw the rest away, as the heart is the only part that is healthy to eat. Dip the hearts in flour, and fry them in lard till brown. The hearts are good stewed, with a little water, butter, salt, and pepper. 88. Eels Eels, if very large, are best split open, cut into short pieces, and seasoned with salt and pepper, and broiled several hours after they have been salted. They are good cut into small strips, and laid in a deep dish, with bits of salt pork, seasoned with salt and pepper, and covered with pounded rusk bread, then baked half an hour. Small eels are the best fried. 89. 
Trout Trout are good boiled, broiled, or fried. They are also good stewed a few minutes, with bits of salt pork, butter, and a little water. Trout, as well as all other kinds of freshwater fish, are apt to have an earthy taste. To remove it, soak them in salt and water a few minutes, after they are cleaned. 90. Clams Wash and put them in a pot, with just water enough to prevent the shells burning at the bottom of the pot. Heat them till the shells open. Take the clams out of them, and warm them with a little of the clam liquor, a little salt, butter, and pepper. Toast a slice or two of bread, soak it in the clam liquor, lay it in a deep dish, and turn the clams onto it. For clam pancakes, mix flour and milk together to form a thick batter. Some cooks use the clam liquor, but it does not make the pancakes as light as the milk. To each pint of the milk, put a couple of eggs and a few clams. They are good taken out of the shells without stewing, and chopped fine, or stewed and put into the cakes whole. Very large long clams are good taken out of the shells without stewing and broiled. 91. Stewed Oysters Strain the oyster liquor, rinse the bits of shells off the oysters, then turn the liquor back on to the oysters, and put them in a stewpan. Set them where they will boil up, then turn them on to buttered toast. Salt, pepper, and butter them to your taste. Some cooks add a little walnut catsup or vinegar. The oysters should not be cooked till just before they are to be eaten. 92. To Fry Oysters Take those that are large, dip them in beaten eggs, and then in flour, or fine bread crumbs. Fry them in lard, till of a light brown. They are a nice garnish for fish. They will keep good for several months if fried when first caught, salted, and peppered, then put into a bottle, and corked tight. Whenever they are to be eaten, warm them in a little water. 93. Oyster Pancakes Mix equal quantities of milk and oyster juice together. To a pint of this liquor, when mixed, put a pint of wheat flour, a few oysters, a couple of eggs, and a little salt. Drop it by the large spoonful into hot lard. 94. Oyster Pie Line a deep pie plate with pie crust. Fill it with dry pieces of bread. Cover it over with puff paste. Bake it till a light brown, either in a quick oven or bake pan. Have the oysters just stewed by the time the crust is done. Take off the upper crust. Remove the pieces of bread. Put in the oysters. Season them with salt, pepper, and butter. A little walnut catsup improves the pie, but is not essential. Cover it with the crust. 95. Scalloped Oysters Pound rusked bread or crackers fine. Butter scallop shells or tins, sprinkle on the bread crumbs, then put in a layer of oysters, a small lump of butter, pepper, salt, and a little of the oyster juice, then put on another layer of crumbs and oysters, and so on till the shells are filled, having a layer of crumbs at the top. Bake them till a light brown. End of section 6